Good morning, everyone. I hope that you are having a great Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. Great Tuesday thus far. And I am super excited to discuss some cooking methods with you today. Um, so before we go ahead and get started, I want to welcome you to the Master Methods of Cooking National Nutrition Month Workshop with Elevation Health. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Rachel Cookta. I am a manager at one of our sites here in Denver, Colorado, as well as I am a NASM certified personal trainer, as well as a precision nutrition level one nutrition coach. All right. So I've been in corporate wellness for about since 2015, and I have a huge passion for personal training, making people feel good, as well as on the nutrition side of things as well, too. That certification is a little bit newer to me, but I'm super excited to share all my knowledge that I have with everyone. So our outline for today is going to consist of the following. So we're going to go ahead and discuss um, finding your method. Then we're going to go into how to make a plan slash what you can do to alter to make your plan even better. Then we're going to go ahead and cover three main methods of cooking today. One pot, pan meals, air fryers, Instant Pot and Crock Pot, those ones are a little bit together since they kind of do the same thing, a little bit different on the pressure cooker side, um, as well as storage options. And then I'm going to go ahead and open it up for some questions. All right. So starting off, I would love to go ahead and discuss what works for you. So when it comes to finding the method that works best for you, it's going to be what works, again, for you. Someone else may have a method that works out better for them. Their schedules might be a little different. They may have more time. They may have less time. So I just want you to think about what works for you. Also, you want to do what you enjoy. There's no right or wrong, wrong way to prepare food. There is nothing that says you must do it this way and that's going to be the best way for you. It's going to be a handful of different types of methods that you're going to use. Um, again, touching in on the time commitment, you just need to be aware of how much time you need to set aside each week. One week may be totally different than the other, especially now um, a lot of companies are going into different types of hybrid work styles. So you may be in the office like five days a week. You may only be going in two times a week. You may be going in three times a week. You may be going in for a whole week and then you're off for the next six weeks. Everybody's is a little bit different. So you just need to know going in each week, know how much time you need to set aside to be successful when it comes to cooking. Then you want to use what you have. You do not need to go out and go buy the most expensive, the newest type of cooking method. Yes, I know they're super intriguing and they may just grab your attention a little bit more, but I guarantee you, you do not need to have every single method of cooking because we only have so much counter space and cabinet space. At least I know I do in my household. So those are just kind of some things to think about what works best for you. Now, when it comes to <clears throat> your cooking method, I'm going to open up a chat book box. What um, makes you most successful when it comes to cooking? Is it figuring out your schedule? Is it making sure that you're able to have enough time set aside? Again, which one works best for you? Having idea of what to eat, the time commitment. Yes, yes. I love that. And we're definitely going to go over all of that today. All right. Taking turns to cook. Yes. Planning ahead. I am a huge planner, Julie. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Okay. So going back into our presentation now, I'm going to kind of show you what I use on my end when it comes to when it comes to cooking. So when it comes to being able to be successful when preparing for cooking, I like to go ahead and do one main thing is prepare. 
So with that, I love, I am a pen to paper kind of gal. I love putting my pen to paper, writing out the meals that I want to have. Then I go from there. So as you'll see on the next page, I go ahead and I discuss how we're going to go into making a plan. So planning out meals. You want to research for recipes for breakfast, lunch, dinner, even your snacks. I know it sounds silly and snacks usually are kind of quick and go, but sometimes you need to plan those out throughout the day. Then you want to go ahead and you want to take inventory. You want to go look into your fridge, go look into your pantry, and you want to figure out what you already have and what you need to get based off of the recipes slash meals that you're going to prepare for that week. Then you're going to go ahead, you're going to start creating that list. You're going to create a list of everything that you'll need for those meals, even if it's the smallest thing, because you know that's going to make the biggest difference in your meal. And then lastly, you need to make sure you are setting aside a time, pick a day and time you like to go grocery shopping. I know it's a little bit different now as we do have options when it comes to using like Instacart or grocery store pickup. Um, Target has a really good pickup section, I know too. But a lot of our grocery stores around the area are able to do that now. And I think it's a great addition, especially when wanting to be successful in making a plan. So this is a sheet that I went ahead and I created, and I am more than happy to share this with you guys. When we send up our wrap-up email, I'll definitely attach this in there. So it goes exactly with what I said. I have each day of the week on here, Monday through Sunday, and you can write out the meals that you're planning to have, the snacks, literally anything from breakfast, lunch, dinner, including your snacks as well, too. Then on the right hand side, I have it broken down into fruits and veggies, protein, pantry slash spices, frozen food, beverages, and other items. I love having a format like this when it comes to planning out your meals because more likely than not, you're not going to miss anything on your list. <laughs> it is all going to be filled out. You're gonna go through your fridge. You're gonna go through your pantry. Something else I do, if I do happen to be lazy, is if I know I want to go to the grocery store at some point, but I don't have time to sit down, I literally take my phone and I take a picture of my pantry and I take a picture of my fridge. And seeing what's in there really helps because then once maybe I get to work for the day and I have about like 10 minutes of downtime where I'm like, oh, I can look at those pictures and see what I have and then create my list from there. So there's always a way to do it. I think actually Samsung, I remember fridge shopping. Samsung has a fridge where you can like pull up a camera on your phone and you can like actually see what's inside your fridge. I think it would only be on the one door, not the full fridge, but still that's pretty cool technology, right? All right, so we are gonna go ahead and hop into our first method here today. And it is going to be our one pot slash pan meals. Now I kind of went in and I am going to discuss like the pros for each of them and then I'll share with you guys a recipe, okay? So for our one pot, one pan meals, you can use anything such as skillet, sheets, pans, Dutch ovens. Kind of think of like a one big cleanup and just using one item instead of using like 10 different pots and pans and different utensils and things like that. You literally will need one base of either your skillet, your sheet pan, your Dutch oven, and hopefully only one tool. Um, another pro is you could cook in larger batches. Think about, again, how big a skillet is. Think about how big a sheet pan is, a cookie sheet. Like those are pretty big, as well as even Dutch ovens. Yes, there's smaller versions of them, which you most definitely can use, but this is just a huge advantage where you can cook in larger batches. Um, more times than not, these are going to take less time to do than, again, using multiple different appliances and skillets and pans and whatnot. It's all in one area, and you're able to literally brown your meat if that's your option. You can saute your veggies. You can mix everything together literally all in one station, and you don't have to worry about messing up anything else in your kitchen. Moving into kitchen cleanup is a breeze. Again, one pot, one pan. One skillet, I don't know about you, but I am someone who does not like doing dishes at all, especially after you've just slaved away in the kitchen all day. So I definitely want, if I only have one pot to clean, that is a-okay by me. <laughs> now, 
going in to the recipe of choice that I chose for you guys. It's going to be a sheet pan meal. So this sheet pan meal that I've decided to use is something that you can go ahead and you can create on your own. Um, there is, again, no right or wrong way um, that you can go ahead and what ingredients you want to use. So literally you're going to grab a giant cookie sheet and you're going to cut up potatoes, Brussels sprouts, peppers, onions, any vegetable of your liking. You're going to take that, chop it all up. Then what you're going to also do is choose your protein. So you can choose chicken, you can choose ground, um, ground chicken, ground sausage, ground beef. Um, you can choose like a chicken sausage. You can choose like a pork, literally any kind of protein that you want to use. You can also go ahead and add in some tofu um, if you want a non-meat option. Then what you're going to do is you're going to place both of those onto your sheet pan. You're going to drizzle them with oil and then whatever seasoning of your choice. You can even use salad dressings on here now too. There are a ton of different options. You want to do more of like an oil based one, not like you don't want to use like a ranch or a Caesar dressing on there. You want to make sure that it's like an oil base so you can have those seasonings stick onto it. Usually my go-to when it comes to seasonings, I usually use pepper, um, garlic powder, I sometimes like spice, so I add on red chili pepper flakes on there too. Again, it's totally customizable, totally whatever you're feeling. Then you're going to go ahead, pop that into the oven. You're going to quick cook between 400 and 450 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes. Those ranges, because with whatever um, protein source that you choose, you just want to make sure that you're cooking it through all the way. And while you are cooking up your protein source as well as your veggies, you want to go ahead and you can prepare some rice or pasta and use that as your base. Then all you're going to go ahead and do as soon as the sheet pan is done in the meal, you're going to go ahead, take it out. You're going to grab a bowl, a plate. You're going to put your bed of greens on there. Um, you can add in greens too, again, your pasta, and then you're going to put your veggies and proteins on top. And then at that time, you could feel free to add on any extra sauces or seasoning. That's maybe if you want to add in more of a um, dairy-based type of dressing on there, one that maybe isn't oil-based, or you want to add on more, um, or even adding on hot sauce or adding on, um, I really like like a sweet chili sauce on mine as well too. So there is one of our first meals that we have today using a sheet pan. And again, only one pan, maybe using a knife to cut everything up, but that's it. Super easy cleanup and doesn't take a lot of prepar preparation either. Next, we are gonna go ahead and talk about air fryers. So air fryers, as some of you are, may know, are all of the craze Currently, um, some of the pros are it definitely takes a lot less time. Um, for one, I know that cooking veggies in there and cooking a protein source such as chicken in there takes very a very less amount of time compared when you're putting it into the oven. Um, also, something I made last night, I made potatoes in there. And instead of roasting potatoes in the oven where it could take anywhere from 40 to 60 minutes, I put them in the air fryer and it took me 12 minutes to make them and they were actually tender and crispy. So that was pretty cool. Um, you can season it with a ton of different flavors. Again, just like before, how I talked about the sheet pan meal, adding in oil and then putting on whatever seasonings of your choice. There are so many good seasonings out there these days. Um, anywhere from just getting them at your local grocery store to even some restaurants. Um, I know sell some of their like secret seasonings as well, too. So that's something to look into. Um, another pro about the air fryer is that it makes it nice and crispy. It gives you that little extra crunch that you maybe sometimes don't get in the oven um, unless you broil something. So that's another huge plus about the air fryer. It just gives it a little bit more of a crispy edge. And then again, you're really not using any other pots and pans, and it's going to be an easier cleanup in there. Um, I know that there's some air fryers that have like the basket in there and you can maybe put like some parchment paper to line it or foil. Um, I have one that is like literally a mini oven. So I just pulled on the door and I have like metal grates in there that I use and I spray those down. So again, those are all I really have to wash after I prepare my food that I'm going to throw into the air fryer. And then my recipe that I have to share with you is air fryer meatballs and veggies. So um, 
what you want to go ahead and do here is you want to grab your vegetables, your oil, and your seasonings to your liking. And you're going to basically place them in your air fryer. So you want to throw it all in a bowl first. You want to grab your ground beef, your ground turkey, ground chicken, whichever you're going to use. You're going to combine it with one cup of breadcrumbs, one egg, just to kind of have it bind together a little bit more, and then your seasonings of choice. Um, you're going to assemble those in the 10 to 12 meat bowls. You can do it by hand, use a spoon, or I used, like to use like a little cookie scoop. So I like to use that cookie scoop and put everything in there, maybe round them out a little bit more. Then I spray down my racks that I have on my air fryer, or again, if you're placing them into the bowl, just maybe line it with some parchment paper or foil, whichever one you prefer to use. And then I air fry the meatballs at 360 degrees for 12 minutes, and then I just make sure halfway through to kind of rotate them through, twist them around. Um, if they're in the basket, you can just shake them up a little bit. Just flip them over so both sides are getting cooked through thoroughly. Then basically to assemble them, you just want to dribble on your favorite sauce. Um, I use a buffalo sauce or a teriyaki sauce. Those are my two favorite. Um, I add in some veggies. You can, again, throw those veggies into the air fryer if you have them roasted up from earlier in the week. Um, you can use that. And then sometimes I add in like a whole grain if I wanted to add in like a pasta or if I wanted to add in a rice option as well, too. Again, totally up to you. All right, and then we are going to go into our last method for today, which is going to be a instant pot and a crock pot. Um, a little bit different, but I'm going to use them today in the same sense of more a crock pot style, not so much as a pressure cooker style. Um, but pros of those are they're going to be full of flavor. Again, you're going to have less time in the kitchen because guess what? You're not doing any of the cooking. The machine itself is doing all the cooking for you. Um, again, these are great for larger families or to have leftovers kind of cook in bulk. Um, no need to defrost, which I have learned as I have gotten older with age. When you ask someone to take out the frozen protein out of the freezer and it, they don't do it, it could literally ruin your entire day. So I remember that with my mom and she would get mad at me and my brothers for not putting something out she asked to. And now I 100% understand that. But with a crock pot, you don't have to worry about that. And then again, maybe this is something easier for those who really don't like to cook. They don't want to sit in the kitchen. They don't want to cut stuff up. They don't want to saute anything. Just literally, it's an option to have using a crock pot, throwing whatever in there um, and letting it kind of just do its own thing on its own. And for our meal with there today, I have absolutely one of my favorites, which is a Fiesta chicken tacos. So this one is awesome because, again, the crock pot does all of the work for you. So what you want to do is you want to create the base. So you want to go ahead and you want to take two to four chicken breasts, and they can be frozen, okay? And you want to place those at the bottom of your crock pot. Um, feel free to like use a liner. Again, put parchment paper down there. Something um, if you don't want the actual like bowl to get like gross or anything like that. Then the easy part, you're literally just going to dump whatever you want in there, in there. So I, I usually just use a salsa of choice. So I grab a salsa, I throw that in there. Or if there's any other um, veggies I want to add more like pepper onion I'll go ahead chop those up or you don't even have to chop those up because guess what you can buy those at the grocery store and they're already chopped up for you someone's done the deed <laughs> so you can go ahead put that in all over the chicken in the crock pot um, depending how like watery your salsa is you may just want to add in like another cup maybe even a full cup of water in there or you can use chicken broth if you just want more flavor and then that's also if you wanted to add in any extra seasonings as well, too. You just want to get all that flavor in there at that point in time when you're very um, first just getting everything into the crock pot. Now where the magic happens, you place your crock pot on high and you leave it for two to eight hours. <laughs> So I say anywhere from two because sometimes you can do this when you get home um, from work and it's more just dump everything and go. But if you feel comfortable enough leaving your crock pot on while you are out of the house all day, you most definitely can. Again, that is totally up to you and how you feel about that. But the more time you let it cook in the instant or crock pot or the instant pot because there is a crock pot setting on the instant pot, 
um, the more flavor that it's going to absorb all over time. It's going to soak up all those juices. It's going to soak up all that flavoring from the salsa and the veggies, as well as the seasonings that you add into. And then this is another meal where you could kind of go ahead and assemble however you'd like. You can create tacos, you can do a crack taco bowl, um, and then you can just add an additional item such as like rice, avocado, and plain Greek yogurt. Plain, not flavor, just plain Greek yogurt is a really good alternative to sour cream if that was something you were interested in. Now, you may be asking, okay, well, I have all these great meals now, Rachel. How the heck do I store them? Well, that is coming right on up. So if you happen to have leftovers from whatever dish that you're cooking, feel free to store them and save them for later on in the week. And sometimes you can even save these like for months later. Um, just make sure you're using like an actual freezer bag or like a free container that can go into the freezer that won't give your food like any frostbite or anything like that. So again, storage. Separate it into containers, throw it in the freezer. If you know you're going to use it like that week, just throw it into the fridge. Again, separate it out into containers, put it into baggies, something that's going to be easy for you to grab and go, especially if you're going into the office. But even if you're not, it's just a really good option to have at home. If you're stuck on meetings and calls all day and you're like, oh my gosh, I need to go eat lunch. You can just go to the fridge and go grab everything that's already portioned out for you. Um, you can use them as leftovers. And again, storing all this, having the leftovers, leftovers means that you're spending less time in the kitchen and more time doing other things that you might enjoy a little bit more than being in the kitchen. <laughs> all right. So after going through and discussing all of those methods, do you, oh, have a favorite one? I'm pulling up the chat box now too. Well, I'll go ahead and kind of go through some of these chats that we have in here. Um, Loves cooking for leftovers. Lot, another great way to make leftovers, yes. Um, similar dishes, potatoes, carrot sausage, seasoned with steak seasoning, yes. Lemon juice and parsley. Again, just use your seasonings. You can make such kind of blah food. Tastes so good using different types of juices and seasonings in there. Um, Ellen, I'm not sure, Arlene, not sure for the under pressure. Um when using that, but yes, a taco salad is another great option. Labeling your items that you put in the freezer. Yes, label them, date them, put them on there so you know when you use just Sharpie. That it usually comes off of like a uh, glass or a Tupperware as well too. Ooh, carnita is very good option. Yes, I love all of those. Um, I've also been using like when you go to Trader Joe's or even Sprouts, it's like they're prepackaged meats and they're kind of like vacuum sealed in there. And you, you can literally take that and like throw those into your Instant Pot or your crock pot, or even just throw them on, into the oven too. Another great quick option. It's already seasoned and everything for you. Um, but putting the chicken into the crock pot, literally, like I said, anywhere from two to eight hours, it's going to absorb up all those juices. Um, and if you do leave it on, I would probably all day, I would probably do it only a low to medium heat just because you don't want to dry out the chicken, even though every time I've done it like that before, I've never really dried out any of the chicken in there. Well, awesome job, guys. All right, I'm going to go ahead, open it up for any questions. If you have anything, feel free to unmute yourself. I'll write them in the chat. Um, yes, so it is safe cooking in there. That's what me and my husband have been doing. So we've been taking the sous vide and we've just been cooking them in the package that they have. Because when you think about it, it's just cooking all on the the water and then in the bag itself. And it's the inside of the bag where the meat is already in. And we've been using it like that for maybe the past like two months. We got it for a Christmas gift and we absolutely love it. Again, really quick and easy. That's what we did for dinner last night. <laughs> All right. Well, just to wrap you guys up and be respectful of your time, I just kind of want to go into some things that we have coming up. Um, we have our Spring Into Live, which is a huge incentive program for you guys. Basically, all you need to do is sign up and participate on our Elevation Live calendar, which you should have access through through our portal account and attend classes and the most participate or participants with the most participation points 
get to win a prize at the end. Throughout the whole entire month of April, there's going to be some fun, new, exciting classes on there. So just be sure to keep your eyes peeled on the Elevation Live calendar. And as always, um, feel free to use Elevation Live exactly where you found this presentation today. Use Elevation Station. There are tons of resources on there from past presentations, past classes. Um, again, it's like our YouTube channel. Feel free to use it. And then again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and send out an email at the end of this where we will have our prize winners too from those who participated in our presentations, as well as I'll send out the handouts as, and copies of these presentations as well too. I thank you guys so much for showing up today, and I hope that you have a great rest of your day.